Last month, I put together the first Intel Skylake non-K overclocking video to hit YouTube and you guys really seemed to like it. I've since received a number of requests to create an overclocking guide based on my experiences with the Core i5-6400. So as my last point of business in 2015, I bring you the Hardware Unboxed Skylake Non-K Overclocking Guide. As with the original video, I'll still be using the Fatality Z170 Gaming K6 Plus, but this guide really applies to any ASRock Z170 motherboard, including their most affordable model, the Z170 Pro 4S. Since breaking the news of their Sky OC technology, the only other motherboard manufacturer to make a similar announcement is Biostar, with what they call their Hyper OC technology. At this point, there are only non-official biases for the select MSI, ASUS, and Gigabyte motherboards, as these companies are yet to make an official announcement. It's also important to note that you must have the correct motherboard BIOS installed to use this new overclocking feature, and ASRock has conveniently listed the supporting version for each of their Z170 motherboards on their website. In the case of the Fatality Z170 Gaming K6 Plus, we required the BIOS version 1.93 to enable the non-K overclocking. The BIOS can be downloaded in one of three flavors for either a DOS-based flash, a Windows-based flash, or the instant flash. The DOS flash is the least convenient option and typically we try to avoid flashing the BIOS within Windows. The ASRock instant flash method via the BIOS works rather well. It's a very convenient and probably the safest method and it only requires a USB thumb drive. The first step is to download the correct BIOS version from the ASRock website and copy it to a USB thumb drive that's been formatted using the FAT32 file system. The BIOS won't detect thumb drives that have been formatted using NTFS. The BIOS is less than 10 megabytes in size, so literally any size thumb drive will do. Once the correct BIOS has been copied, make sure that the thumb drive is connected to a USB port on the system you're flashing, and then restart. Enter the BIOS and start up by pressing F2 or the delete key. By default, the Fatality Z170 Gaming K6 Plus, and most ASRock Z170 motherboards for that matter, load into the easy mode setup. You want to switch to the advanced mode by pressing F6 and then enter. The next step is to navigate to the tool menu and scroll down to the instant flash utility. If you receive the error message, no image file detected, that means the thumb drive is either not formatted correctly or the BIOS simply isn't on the drive. Alternatively, we suggest trying a different USB port, perhaps a USB 2 port rather than a USB 3 port, for example. If all goes well, the Instant Flash tool will detect the new BIOS on the thumb drive and give you the option to install it. From this point forward, you want to sit back and do nothing for a few minutes until the process is complete. It's imperative that you do not reset the system or lose power at this point, as it will likely result in your system becoming unusable. That said, in the case of the Fatality Z170 Gaming K6 Plus, there is a secondary BIOS which you can switch over to, and this will help avoid having to make a warranty claim. The entire process takes around 30 to 40 seconds, but it can take longer. Once complete, the Instant Flash utility notified us of the success and then reset the system. After a quick reboot, we're now using the new 1.93 BIOS and it's time to start overclocking. To confirm you are in fact using the correct BIOS, check the main menu which lists the motherboard model and BIOS version, as well as the processor type, speed and memory configuration. All the overclocking action takes place in the OC tweaker menu. First, let's jump into the DRAM configuration menu. The first thing you want to do here is load the XMP memory profile. I suggest loading the most aggressive memory frequency setting, which in our case was XMP 2.0 Profile 1 for DDR4-3000. If you load the memory profile after making all the overclocking adjustments, it'll reset everything back to default. Now that the XMP profile has been loaded, manually set the DRAM frequency back down to say 2133 MHz to allow for some overclocking headroom. In our case, we can safely go as high as 3000 MHz without compromising memory stability. Next, adjust the BCLK or base clock frequency, which by default has been set to auto, which translates to 100 MHz. Previously, I'd found that our Core i5-6400 sample could reach 160 MHz for an operating frequency of 4.32 GHz, a nice 60% overclock. Rather than jump to 160 MHz, we began overclocking in 10 MHz increments and continued doing so until we hit a limitation. It was then that we played around with memory frequencies and CPU voltages to try and continue on. Overclocking is always done best in baby steps as this better helps you understand what the limitations are and more importantly what might be causing them. 
With that said, begin by increasing the base clock to 110 megahertz, and this small step will already add 270 megahertz to your Core i5-6400's operating frequency. At the 110 megahertz base clock, we find that the DDR4 memory has jumped up from 2133 megahertz to 2346 megahertz, which is still well within the operating parameters. Now we're going to save and exit the BIOS, reboot the system and see if it posts as it should. Upon success, we re-entered the BIOS and pushed the base clock up to 120 MHz, which resulted in a 20% overclock for a CPU frequency of 3.24 GHz and a memory speed of 2559 MHz. This process was repeated all the way up to a 150 MHz base clock, at which point we needed to reduce the memory frequency from 3199 MHz down to 3000 MHz. Then finally, at 160 MHz, the memory frequency again needed to be reduced from 3200 MHz back to 2987 MHz for a 1 to 8 ratio. Obviously, if you only have DDR4 2400 memory for example, you'll need to ensure that the memory frequency stays below 2400 MHz. Using the 160 MHz base clock with the 2987 MHz memory speed, the Core i5-6400 would load Windows 10 happily at 4.32 GHz without any voltage adjustments. That said, stressful applications would occasionally crash, causing us to increase the vCore voltage to 1.35 volts. At this voltage, the system was 100% stable and survived any stress test that we threw at it. For testing how stable an overclock is, we recommend using Prime95, which allows you to run a torture test that places 100% load on all cores. If you just want to quickly check an overclock, run this test for 10 minutes, and then to ensure an overclock is stable, run it for an hour. Given this is a 1.62 GHz overclock, we didn't feel the need to try and push the Core i5-6400 any further, as we're now receiving a tremendous amount of extra performance from this sub $200 quad-core processor. Should you mess up any BIOS settings along the way, causing the system to fail the boot test, then don't panic. Most ASRock motherboards such as the Fatality Z170 Gaming K6 Plus feature boot guard and you'll find other brands offering similar features. The motherboard will detect when an overclock has failed and reset the system into the BIOS under a safe mode type boot. Still, should the overclocking friendly safeguards fail, you can always clear the CMOS using either a jumper or simply by removing the motherboard's battery once the mains power has been disconnected. We suggest you consult your user manual to learn the best method for resetting your own motherboard's BIOS. So to recap, make sure you have the correct BIOS installed for non-K overclocking, make sure you go up in small incremental steps, and keep an eye on the resulting memory frequency. Getting our Core i5-6400 up to 4GHz was done very easily without any additional voltage. Once you start adding extra voltage, the thermal output will increase quite dramatically and you'll want to ensure you have a decent CPU cooler and adequate case cooling to deal with that extra heat. For testing, we used the $30 Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO, so you don't need to spend a lot of money to achieve these overclocks. On that note, please don't attempt to overclock using the standard Intel Box Cooler, it simply won't cope. Also, for 24-7 usage, we don't suggest using much over 1.35 volts, as this could shorten the life of your processor. As a final note, this overclocking guide not only applies to the Core i5-6400, but all Skylake Core i5, Core i3, Core i7, and even Pentium processors. The only variable to really change will be the base clock. CPUs such as the Core i5-6600, which use a much higher clock multiplier, will likely be limited to a lower base clock. For example, to reach the same 4.2 GHz overclock, the 6600 will only require 130 MHz base clock speed. Thanks for watching this hardware unboxed overclocking guide. As always, if you have any questions, then please let us know in the comments or on our forum at Hardware Unboxed, where we have a dedicated thread for this video. You can find the link in the description or up there. Remember to hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.